Hello everyone. This morning I got into a furball of sorts with an individual um, during a discussion about Generation X, late Generation X, Millennials and Generation Z not having children. And there was a whole bunch of talk about how irresponsible that gen these generations are and what lazy fucks they are and all that sort of stuff. And um, I mentioned that, you know, maybe finances could be a little nicer, you know, um, it'd just be nicer if we got paid better, if we got better, you know, pay and that sort of uh, thing. And an individual came into the conversation and decided to attack my looks and said, well, if you didn't dress like a woman and got yourself a real job, you probably could afford a family. And uh, <laughs> this kind of pissed me off because it's like, first of all, I'm not stupid enough to try to wear my styles and stuff for getting jobs. And uh, this, this a-hole doesn't know anything about me. But it got me thinking, was I ever financially in a position to where I could have buy a house and have kids? I would have liked to. I really would have. But, um, well, I compiled a list and I'd like to, for you to tell me if I could have been able to have uh, a job. So, here's the list. So, first of all, I was born to a lower middle class family in, the early de in December of the early 70s. And my mom was a optometrist um, office's uh, secretary, and my father worked in a shipyard as a welder. Um, due to my birth dates, my intake into school was delayed, and I was held back in first grade due to being a hyperactive kid when in fact I was uh, mercilessly bullied for having shocking copper red hair, which I don't have anymore, and my face was full of freckles. Uh, there were other things too, I had high-pitched voice, and I was small of stature, all of that sort of thing. But at age 12, I obtained my first job, and it was, um, I obtained my first job as a paper boy. And I delivered newspapers and made money doing that. And um, I didn't really get paid much, but it was my first job. And I woke up early in the morning, folded newspapers, and lobbed them at people's houses. Made money doing it. Um, but then I got my first real job. And it was in the field that I wanted to be in, aviation. I love airplanes, always have. And at the age of 14, I got a job at a local banner towing company at the near airport. And for that, with that job, I was making $9 an hour. I worked on weekends, or during the week if I could, flew over every ball game that we could, and I uh, worked there for quite a long time, actually. Um, and during that time, I acquired my pilot certificate at the age of 19, and I graduated high school at 19. Also during, and uh, after graduating, I got my first car, a 1969 VW Beetle that I had restored. So, I then attended junior college, during which I obtained the uh, associate's degree, uh, along with the FAA airframe and power plant certificate, um, where I could work, uh, uh, FAA yeah, airframe power plant certificate, which allows me to work as an aircraft mechanic. Um, so during this period, I was working at the banner job as well as a pizza shop, along with being a driver for a bagel delivery company. And um, I worked at uh, worked those places for a while. But then I got my second aviation job at an aircraft components uh, shop. I was 23 years old, and I was making $11 an hour. Uh, Part-time, because I was also attending four-year college to get the uh, computer science degree. But during that time, I also, I got laid off from the component shop because they were, they were really making all that money. They weren't doing that great. And I got laid off and I got my third aviation, uh, my second aviation job. No, my third aviation job at the age of 26. It was an aircraft maintenance facility. It was a friend of mine who just got me the job. And, I worked there. I worked there for t 
two to three years, and during that time I earned my stripes as an aviation maintenance technician. I changed engines, I replaced cylinders on engines, I test flew the airplanes that I, I did, I became director of maintenance, but unfortunately due to upper level management uh, mistakes, the shop folded and um, I had to get another job. <clears throat> The fourth aviation job was at a smaller shop, making $11 an hour, and uh, the shop wasn't financially viable, and it unfortunately also failed, which is unfortunate, because the fellow who owned it was a really nice guy. Um, he, he was a really decent fellow. Unfortunately, he died in an aircraft crash. Uh, test flying an airplane, he had just put an engine in. Um, yeah, that was pretty bad when I learned of uh, his uh, demise. Um, he didn't put the engine in. It was a shop that had put the engine in, and he was flying the airplane back. And during that time, the turbo turbocharger broke loose, and the airplane caught fire, and he went down in a ball of flames. Okay, so, um, yeah. Then I got my fifth job in the field at a propeller shop. Again, I was making $11 an hour, and I didn't really like this job. It wasn't my thing. Um, I didn't like working on components. I like working on airplanes. So, I got my sixth aviation job. It was in a bigger shop. Uh, they worked on twin-engine airplanes, and uh, I was making $15 an hour. Unfortunately, it wasn't really a good shop. It was kind of a crooked shop, and the guy who owned it was kind of a crooked guy. But... Um, I did my best and I worked there because I also had put in my application for all the, the airlines. And um, in August of 2001, I got hired with United Airlines. I was making a probationary period uh, wage of $28 an hour. I was working the graveyard shift and I was looking forward to making $35 an hour. And I had my eyes on getting into the pilot's area and during that time and um while i was working at the other shop i had earned my instrument rating so um so i got this uh, job at united in august of 2001 yeah so we had 9-11 i'm not going to go into details about that other than the fact i got laid off with no recall rights and I got, um, because I was a probationary employee, and so they had no recall rights. So I, um, I was looking for other jobs. I looked at all the aircraft shops. No aircraft shops were hiring because 9-11 screwed everything up. So I got a non-aviation job working at a warehouse, making $11 an hour. Mm -hmm. Are you noticing a theme here? I could stand that job for only a month. I got the hell out. I tried to get back into aviation, but no one was hiring. I got a job at a paratransit company, where I was making $13 an hour driving the elderly and infirm from one location to another. Um, while I worked there, I was able to move, move, out of, uh, move out of my house, and I moved in with some friends. And I was age 30. I worked for Paratrans for five years, and during that time, I became a road supervisor and made an extra 50 cents an hour for being a road supervisor. Um, and I came close to killing myself because the job sucked. I was on call for 24-7. My social life went to hell. Dur before all that, I was my goth scene were, was sort of picking up, although it's only like maybe once in a blue moon I actually got to go to the goth club. Um, but uh, I was pretty much independent. I was living on my own. And before then, I had actually moved out of my parents' house uh, while working at the twin engine shop. Uh, and I was able to move into a cottage. So I was living on my own. I was paying a $1,400 rent for a converted garage. So, let's see. Um, then I got hired at my first aircraft shop. Uh, my first? My first aircraft shop that I got my first aviation job with, rehired me. Years later, I was 35 years old, I was making $15 an hour. 
Wow. During this time, I obtained my, obtained my pilot's, uh, commercial pilot certificate, and I got my first flying job for $11 a flight hour independent contractor. I was doing traffic watch, and that's what they paid. However, I was just piling the hours on. I woke up early in the morning, and I got, did the morning flights. I worked at my shop, and then I went flying at night. Long days. Each flight was three hours, by the way. And then the financial collapse of 2008. And also, my father's passing. I had to move back in with my mom, but I also lost both my jobs. While living at my mom's, <clears throat> I got a job at a small computer shop for $11 an hour, independent contractor. But also, I worked on and obtained my certified flight instructor certificate. And the, for that, I was making $35 a flight hour, um, but it was very unstable. So I was working at a computer shop and I was working at, uh, as a flight instructor. And on my weekends, I worked a desk at the flying club. Um, and uh, the flight, the flying was just unstable. Um, some students would cancel flights just out of the blue. This financially sucked. I mean, I was able to move out of my mom's and I was able to move in with some goths, and, uh, which were kind of cool. And during that time, I met my girlfriend, my current girlfriend, um, and uh, I moved out of, I worked as, the, uh, as a flight instructor for a year, and my first year's earnings as a flight instructor, because it's independent contractor, three quarters of my income was sucked up in taxes. This wasn't going to work. I thought it would. It wouldn't. But in 2014, I got hired by an aircraft shop as a mechanic. And that's nice and stable. And I started off at $15 an hour. Um, and this is my current job. I started at 15. I'm now making 28. Um, in 2016, I was able to get myself a new car to replace my poor Volkswagen. I still have the Volkswagen. It's just old and it's tired. It's 50 years old. And um, I got myself a 2013 Dodge Challenger. I love it because I always loved the Ch Charger RT, 69 Charger RT. And so I got myself this beautiful Challenger. And I moved in with my girlfriend. And we lived in an apartment together. Um, and in 2018, the apartment burned down. During that time, we were actually looking at getting a house. Um, but we had to move into a new place, our current place, this place that you see here. Uh, rent was two thousand is two thousand dollars an hour, and I'm making twenty eight dollars an hour, and she's making fourteen to fifteen dollars at, uh, at a grocery store. Um, and then COVID came about. And now I'm 50 years old. I'm still working at that aircraft shop that hired me in 2014. I am the sole mechanic. I maintain 15 aircraft. Um, I have done many test flights. I have put in many engines. I have restored many aircraft. And I have done a lot of rescue missions because I'm a pilot and I can fly to uh, off locations and repair aircraft off site. So, I would like you to tell me when could I afford and start a family responsibly. Not without government aid or any of that. I'd like you to tell me. Because if you noticed, I was making 11 freaking dollars an hour at all my jobs. I couldn't find a job that paid more, that would hire me. I had my job at United, but of course, United went away. Fizzled. Boom. Gone. My flight instructor job, no way could I support a family with that. No freaking way. No way. And like I said, in 
around 2016, my girlfriend and I were actually looking at buying a house and getting ourselves a house. And then our apartment burned down. So, to the person who said, get a job and sacrifice and all of that stuff, screw you, okay? I couldn't. I could not get, a, I could, I did my best. I did absolutely my best. I did not uh, waste my life. Things didn't work out. That's it. And I don't think I'm alone. I think 2008 and 2001, 2001 and 2008, and around 1998, there was some sort of financial collapse that happened. All those things contributed to not just me, but a lot of people not being able to responsibly bring children into this world. Now, other people, sure they could. They got jobs at computer, computer places. Stupid me decided to go in a career of aviation. I probably should have gone into computers because I know people who are in computers and they are making good money. I have a first generation IT friend whom I haven't seen in years, but he was a first generation IT. He was always struggling, always. He hasn't, hasn't had a family either. So, to this person who decided to rip into my my feminine appearance and stuff, um, um, screw you. That's it. Just screw you. People like you suck. Um, you you said something about being able to get to be able to buy three houses after two years with his first real job. Good for you. I, I have no idea what you were doing. Maybe you were selling drugs or something. I have no freaking clue. I was in aviation. I was a test pilot. I am a mechanic. I'm making, maintaining 15 aircraft. And I have my crazy look. Sorry. I'm getting a little crazy eyes there because I'm kind of pissed. I, I don't understand people who feel a need to tell someone like me to get a job and sacrifice. I did. I did the best I could. Now he was saying I was being a victim and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, no, I'm not a victim, dude. I'm not a victim. I'm just facing reality. I'm 50 years old. There's no freaking way I'm going to bring a child into this world. And when I was younger, there was no way I could responsibly bring a child into this world. But I'm certainly not a lazy ass. And I'm not someone who um, didn't sacrifice or do everything that I could. So... That's my video, and I hope, um, I would like to be, for other people to say what their experience is. Maybe I'm just an outlier. I don't know. I know no, none of my friends, even people in computers, have, have kids. None of them. So, uh, just a whole wasted generation, I guess. I wish this video could have been a little more cheerful, but, um, hey, and the brakes. All right.